There are so many implications stemming from Uber's experiment with a driverless taxi service in Pittsburgh. Welcome to Pittsburgh. But at the launch, the company forbade any on-the-record discussion. Instead, we got this. Since the 50s, there was commercials, your family driving in the back seat, playing dominoes while nobody's looking forward. So that's the first part of the press conference over with. We haven't been able to ask any questions on the record yet. And the same was true on our test drive. Nothing on camera. Nothing on camera. OK. Well, here's what we do know. Select customers can now request a driverless car in Pittsburgh. There will be two Uber employees in each car, trained to take over if there are any problems. We also know there's no legislation in Pennsylvania governing the use of autonomous cars, nor is there any requirement for Uber to share any of its data with the city of Pittsburgh and its inhabitants. That has some worried that in the rush to be at the forefront of research into automation, the city is allowing itself to become a huge corporate laboratory with no oversight. The company realizes that they're in a, basically a cowboy pioneer land where they get to decide how this technology is used, they get to decide when the risk analysis uh, dictates that you shouldn't have it on the road and when you should have it on the road. I mean, the company is going to decide when there's a snowstorm. Is it bad enough that we shouldn't have the autonomous car drive or not? Uber argues that the rush for autonomous cars isn't about increasing profits by cutting out the need to pay a human driver. It says this is about safety. Human error is a major factor in the some 3,000 killed each day around the world in car accidents. And the city's mayor argues that sometimes innovation has to come before legislation, although he says he shares concerns about Uber's motivations. In a government that thinks like a startup would think, which is very, very uncommon in the United States, government is risk averse. If you think that way, you can build out economies and build out industries that may not have looked at your city before. The professor, though, is skeptical that we benefit in the end. The idea that market forces always cause us to go to a better quality of life, I believe is actually nonsense. Look at automated checkout counters in supermarkets. Supermarkets incorporate them. They're dog slow compared to human beings, so they're worse for us. But the reason supermarkets put them in is because they're cheaper. They cost them less. All Uber has to do is make a product that's good enough that we'll all switch to it, even if it's less good than our current product. And if we switch to it, then we're a captive audience. Uber declined our request to address these concerns. Shia Britansi, Al Jazeera, Pittsburgh.